Hello, everybody. Welcome to the bullish live stream. Today is just one of those days where you wake up and everything's looking good and everything's looking green and everybody's happy. And I am not going to get in the way of that. So I have to tell you, though, what a difference 24 hours makes. Now, it was just uh, just yesterday. We did a stream yesterday and uh, we talked about Kathy Wood and uh, from ARK Investment. She had done a pretty great uh, interview. and We talked a little bit about, you know, why the SEC potentially hasn't approved uh, the spot ETF, where things were going. Is it going to be institutions or is it going to be retail? Also, is this going to be a buy the room or sell the news and all that stuff? It was a pretty good stream. And then like later in the day, it just seemed like uh, the crypto market just kind of took a little bit of a tumble, which is not surprising. This is the crypto market, not traditional equities, and it's pretty normal. And again, what 24 hours will do is pretty amazing. I was, but it was amazing to me how fast things switched as far as the, as far as the mentality. It's like, I think people are waiting for that shoe to drop. And when we see that like Bitcoin goes down and look at this, I mean, we were at almost 30, well, let's see, 14th. We were almost at 37,000. Then we dropped down to 35 too. And everybody's like, oh, that's it. Well, that was a fun rally. So it looks like we're going to be in the, in the uh, doldrums for quite some time. And it's going to be low. And of course, everybody who did what they did, if you're like me, and you just look at this and go, eh, that's yeah, drop. Maybe it drops more. Maybe it goes up, whatever. Hopefully the dollar cost average gets uh, executed at the right time and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. And then all of a sudden tomorrow, here we are. Now we're at 37, 435. I mean, that's amazing to me that uh, just how fast this one actually turned around. We can see that it wasn't just Bitcoin. I mean, we're almost at one, you know, we're almost at a one and a half trillion dollar market cap. Look at that, 1.478. And we've been teetering on that. I think that's a psychological level. Once we hit 1.5, that's uh, one of those things where people say, okay, now maybe we really are back. And when we hit 2 trillion, whew, watch out. I'm not going to say that it's going to happen anytime soon, but I'm just saying, these are the berries that we're looking at. So Bitcoin, 24 hours. And let's look at these beautiful, beautiful green numbers. Solana, 18%, 50% and a seven day run. Cardano, Dogecoin, eh, only 4.9, not too great. Uh, Polygon, Avalanche, we're gonna get to Avalanche in a little bit later. It actually outperformed uh, Solana. And you can just see as we go down, you know, we're not looking at too much red, we're looking at a lot of green. I know some of you who got it in 2021 and you were just here for the bear market. This is child's play. This is, uh, this is just a Wednesday. So it's not like this is uh, going to be the end all be all. So just wait. Now you're going to be presently, uh, pleasantly surprised as we move on. And it's not just, of course, with the crypto market. Look at the S&P 500. I mean, just today, a little bit of a squiggle, but uh, over the five day, over the month, eh, not too bad. Six month, a little bit heavy. And that's why we are actually, in some days, we are uncorrelated to the traditional markets. And we can look at Pearson's and the uncorrelation over at the end of the cryptoverse, but you can just kind of see, I mean, over six months, what a drop it's been in a year. Of course, we, we zoom out five years, still looking pretty good. And we're actually 4,500 for the, and we're almost going to, damn, we are pretty close to the all-time high. Well, not pretty close, but you can see where, what I mean. So the talks about recessions and things like that, I still see a recession at some point, but it's looking pretty good right now. So that's what we have. And the question is, why? Why, 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 why? Well, of course, there's the narrative of the spot ETF. Everybody thinks it's going to happen like tomorrow. I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe in January, maybe in March, something like that. But also, you have to take a look at uh, just what the money is and, and just follow the money. Crypto market sees uh, net capital inflow for the first time in 17 months. Imagine that. In 17 months, it's taken us to get here. And that's with a pretty darn bullish narrative. So, this is what we have. 90-day net change in supply of the top four stables has flipped positive. Why is that important? I'll get to that in a second. Indicating an inflow of capital into the market. Since 2020, stable coins, which weren't really a big thing until just like three, four years ago. Stable coins have been widely used to fund crypto purchases. I know Tether was around for quite some time, USDC, I get it. But, you know, over time, it's, uh, be it's become more of a market cap for the stables. Uh, while they use the fund crypto purchases, hence an increase in the supply of stable coins is taken to represent potential buying pressure or dry powder that investors may deploy to purchase crypto or use as a margin in derivatives trading. You want to do derivatives trading? You know, have at it, have fun. But you're going to see right here, look at this. Look at the net negative that we've had since May 2022. Let me put this in, in, in context. I remember May 2022 because this was the first time I went over to London 
and I got to speak with, uh, with a guy at his event at, um, at Coin Bureau. And I remember I was sitting down, and this is the first time, I, this is the first time I, I met a guy. This was in May, 22. And we we're talking, and uh, he's like, so what do you think? I'm not even going to try to in, in, imitate his, his accent. So what do you think, uh, Rob? You think we're in a bull run, or, uh, or are, we, are we in a bear market, or are we still in a bull run? I'm like, it's looking pretty bearish right now, quite honestly. And he's like, well, he goes, you know, some of the people we think it's actually looking bullish. We can turn things around. And I got to tell you, when I went to this conference, it was like split down the middle. People were like, no, we still think that, uh, you know, we're going to see more of a bull run. We just still see that we don't think it's that bearish. And other people were like, no, 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 we might be bearish. And some people, and I remember somebody actually stood up and was talking about how great Doquan was. <laughs> That's how long ago this was, and things moved pretty quickly. So as we take a look here, that's some net negative for quite some time and is now just turning a net positive change for a stable coin. So if you're looking at some kind of verification as maybe we are entering or in a bull market, then that is one of those things. And if you look at the actual definition of what is a bull market, because people are going to throw that, that term around all the time. If you look at Investopedia, and this is just for traditional equities, there's two real criteria for what we consider like a bull run or a bull market. There's a 20% increase of uh, price action from the low. On top of that, uh, sentiment is positive. So if we look at the fear and greed index, I can guarantee it's either in greed or extreme greed, probably greed. And of course, we know about 20%. We're already up that. I mean, hell, uh, avalanches did that in seven days. So these are the things that I look at, and it looks like we're doing this pretty well. The question is, is how long will this last? And can we execute at the time that we're supposed to as far as selling? I'll get to that in the very last piece. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And then I just, I had to, I want to pull a story to, to, to emphasize something, which is this. I know a lot of people are like, shoot, I missed my opportunity and I should have invested a bunch. Or, you know, I did this and it just didn't really work out. I just want to remind everybody that nobody gets it right. Nobody gets it right all the time. Even some of the greats stumble. And this is just how it is. Michael Burry. So this was a tweet uh, over from uh, not Jerome Powell, one of the funnier crypto Twitter accounts. I need to link him in the, in the description. But uh, this was uh, Michael's uh, tweet on January 31st, 2023. And he just said, sell. And everybody freaked out when they, when they heard this. Now, if you're not familiar with Michael Burry, he is uh, the famous one in the big short movie. He was played by Christian Bale. And of course, he's the one that actually got it right for the, in the Great Recession uh, when everything was kind of collapsing in 2009, 2012. And what he did is he said, hey, look, I'm going to uh, uh, put a lot of my money where my mouth is and I'm going to put a lot of funds up. And it didn't really work out. Michael Burry has closed his $1.6 billion S&P 500 NASDAQ short position for a loss of 40%. Now, let me make sh me crystal clear. He didn't lose 1.6 billion. That's ridiculous. This is a national value. More like around 10 million. But I don't know about you, 10 million is kind of a big, big number for us. And here's what we got. So to make sure we know what this is, and just remember this, nobody gets it right all the time. And that's just how investments go. Burry's bearish bets get shuffled according to Science 13F filings. So of course he has to file uh, with the SEC or for the because he's a uh, publicly, I believe. So collapse, the market collapse. Michael Burry's latest endeavors to capitalize on market downturns have predominantly misfired. Initiated in the second quarter, is renowned or is renewed short positions targeting the S&P 500 Nasdaq through puts. Saw Burry compelled to abandon these trades in the third quarter amidst an ongoing market rally. How many people out there thought we were going to see a big turn? I was one of those included. I thought for, I was pretty certain we were actually gonna go down. And I told everybody, I'm like, I think we're gonna go down, probably maybe world recession at the end of the, end of the year, if not 2024. That's good for me, because I'm a dollar cost averager. I need the price to go down so I can pick up cheap stuff. And it uh, didn't work out in my favor, then my portfolio is all right. Anyhow, during this period, Burry entirely withdrew his puts on the S&P 500 NASDAQ. Uh, ETF positions that constituted nearly 1.6 billion in total national exposure. Contrary to some beliefs, Burry's wage did not equate to 1.6 billion loss. I don't think he has, I don't think he's got 1.6 billion. Maybe he's company, but he didn't have that. Uh, Coca, the one that uh, evaluated this, emphasized that the actual cost and risk were likely under $10 million, but still $10 million burns. I don't care how much you make. 
Additionally, the big short investor also liquidated a 47 million bearish position against the semiconductor sector because people were talking about that he's shorting semiconductors uh, via puts on the SOXX ETF, a bet that consistently depreciated his chip stocks, made a comeback this year. Bray readjusted the most of his uh, equity portfolio, exiting 25 holdings, including previous primary investors such as Expedia, Charter, and Generac Holdings. So again, if you think that uh, everybody's fantastic and they're going to make it, that's not how it goes. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes and it's not going to work out for you, but it's okay. At some point, you will make it. Just give a little bit of time. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And so that was, there was two good sides, right? We took a look at there's a massive inflow of stable coins. People don't get it right. Let's, talk, let's take a look at the grand review globally about what's going on. Commerce Bank was granted a crypto custody license in Germany. Now, I was talking about this for about a year or so. I didn't believe that banks would actually make it. And you can actually see there's reports about how banks, brick and mortar banks in the United States alone, not for sure how, what it is in Europe and, and parts of Asia, but they are on the massive decline as they either shut them all down or they shut some of them down, 20 to 30% of those brick and mortar banks, or they just don't build as much as they used to because what is the point? And I have always said, I'm like, look, if these guys wanna make a profit, they're gonna have to do something instead of just keep closing down, which is what we saw is like run of the banks and things like that. And this I think is the next step and Germany gets it right. So congratulations, Germany, you're doing the right thing. The first full service bank in the country receives a crypto custody license from local regulators. That's pretty cool. The bank said its first step is now to establish a platform that's both secure and reliable. That's a good one and fully complies with local regulations while supporting its institutional clients through crypto custody services via blockchain. The development from Commerce Bank follows similar news out of Germany, where the company's third largest bank, DZ Bank, revealed its crypto custody offerings for institutional investors on November 6th. So it looks like this may be for retail. Again, this is a step in the right direction, and you're going to see more and more banks do this because why? All they have to do is take a look at these centralized exchanges and go, Ah, oh, they're making pretty good money for these for what they're doing. I see Coinbase is doing institutional custody. Hell, we can do that. We can make money. That's what they're here for. The banks aren't here to change the world. They're here to change their pocketbook. And that means that they're going to do what they can do to take market share away from centralized exchanges. Hey, may the best business win. So I'll applaud everybody that does that. So that's what we have for that. And then also, like I talked about in the beginning, I want to talk about Avalanche. Avalanche is the big winner this week. Uh, 50 well, just 59%, 59% for seven days. It's up 23, is that 23%? In 20, yeah, geez, at least 23% in, uh, in 24 hours. And that beats uh, the darling, which is Solana, which is doing still ah, 18% for 24 hours and 50% for seven days. So why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, gaming's gonna explode. I've been talking about this for at least about a year or so, maybe six months, maybe a year. I've always said there's two narratives, AI and gaming. Avalanche is gonna be big in gaming. They already got some pretty good games out. On top of that, ta-da, they just partnered up with JP Morgan. So sometimes you gotta deal with the devil. JP Morgan, Wisdom Tree, team up with Avalanche, Axel Layer Zero on blockchain interoperability. And what this is for, this is for RWAs or real world assets. So JP Morgan's Onyx teamed. If you don't know what Onyx is, Onyx is, it is a closed ecosystem. It is a closed blockchain, which is the exact opposite of the things that I think you know blockchain actually should be. It's just in-house. I don't get the whole point of it, but JP Morgan's like, we're gonna make it work. Good luck, Jamie. So JP Morgan's Onyx team, they teamed up with all these different companies, Avalanche being one of them, for investment portfolio management. The project is designed to enable fund managers to tokenize, purchase, and rebalance real world asset positions across multiple blockchains. I find this fascinating that Onyx, their closed, not open blockchain, couldn't manage everything, so they got to team up with everybody. Why did they do that? Why didn't they just go to one of these blockchains and say, hey, let's just, we want you guys to do it and we'll work with you and you guys put everything on chain. And then everything's in an open ledger and it's immutable and everybody can see it. but. You know, the banks are going to do what they're going to do. So this is one of those examples of the banks are trying to hold on to power, which, uh, you know, good luck to them. But that's good for Avalanche. And one of the big reasons, one of the bigger reasons, I believe, that uh, Avalanche is blowing up and uh, with good reason. So, again, as I said before, pay attention to the different products that are building in the bear 
because they will crush it in the bull. And I know that you don't think that Avalanche just were like, hey, let's just do this and see how this works out. Maybe some gaming work out when we get in the bull. Maybe it'll work with JP Morgan. Maybe all the things we have. No, this is a lot of work uh, in the background. So that uh, concludes everything for the news. There is um, one thing I want to do every single time we do the news, which is to talk about sell indicators. And like I said in the beginning, this is great that we're in a bull run and everybody's super happy, right? The same thing happened in 2017, same thing happened in 2021. But the thing is you start to think about is, when am I going to sell this stuff? Because am I going to screw this up? Because I guarantee, I can't guarantee. I think that most of you out there or some of you out there probably wrote up a bag a little bit too long and wrote it all the way up and wrote it all the way down. Well, how do you sell all that stuff? Well, there's two things. First, there's a video. It's free. It's, uh, there's a link in the description of where I'm talking about where I'm going to sell crypto 80% of all my crypto and when I'm going to do it. Don't worry. You watch the video and I'll tell you when I'm going to do it. But the things I want to do is just kind of get you guys used to this thing is talk about some of these indicators. And one of those is the Puel multiple. The Puel multiple, and you can find this on lookintobitcoin.com. Links in the description. It's a 100% free website for the crypto side. If you're looking for the macro side, it is a paid service, but uh, I love this stuff just for uh, for the Bitcoin itself. The macro side's uh, excellent too, but that's up to you if you want to do it. So the Puel multiple, it's all about the Bitcoin's economy, Bitcoin miners and their revenue. The Puel multiple is calculated by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 365 365 day moving average. Chart above highlights periods when the value of Bitcoins issued on a daily basis has historically been extremely low, which means it's a pretty good time to buy. And then when it gets red or overheated, might be a good time to sell. So we can see right here that again, links in the description, free tool to use. And you can see that it did a pretty darn good job when things were at their lowest. Like look at this in 2018, it was telling you to buy around 4,000, 3,000, 4,000, damn, that's it. Then, it. then it jumped out to this little white area here. And then over here, what'd this do? This was in June 30th, 2021, 34,000. Nah, that's not too great. What's this over here? Ah, oh, yeah, August 19th, 2022, 20,000. All in these green areas are pretty good times to buy, right? Daily issuance and the amount that was actually being uh, as far as uh, Bitcoin mining and, and the revenue wasn't too great. So maybe it's a good time to maybe buy a little bit. Then you're in this white area where like, eh, I don't know, maybe I can, if I'm going to layer in dollar cost, I'm going to layer out. But here's where it gets really good. See these red areas where it starts to get into this, this little piece. When you're looking at here in 2017, as it hits the top, 18,000 is a pretty good time to buy. And then over here, when it just kissed the top, 59,000. Again, you can layer in like we dollar cost average and layer out, or you can take a look at this. And of course there's a multiple, I talk about six, seven, actually eight different indicators in that video. Also, there's a pretty good one on Ben's website, exit strategies. And I like this one. It's for people who are like, wow, what should I do? And you know, what's a, what's a good way to do this? I'm just gonna go over this real quick, which is this, we all know about dollar cost averaging, right? So we buy a little bit, Wait a little bit. Like for me, I dollar, like if you watch my show every Sunday, I, show, I tell you exactly the things I've been dollar cost averaging since September. Actually, I've been dollar cost averaging since uh, 2022, or around May when I was talking to a guy about this. And I've been buying every day. Some I buy every day, some I buy every week. It just depends. And of course, if you layer in, maybe you want to layer out. How do you do that? Well, this is a great tool that just came up on Ben's site about a month ago or so, maybe two months ago. And it shows you how to do this, which I thought was pretty cool. So here's the example. So let's just put in, and you got 20 different things you can pick from, right? Bitcoin, ETH, ADA, DOT, AVAX, and a bunch of other ones. So I just picked Solana because everybody loves Solana right now. No, that's not true. Uh, some people absolutely despise Solana, but uh, the people that invested into it love it. So the amount of, let's just say you got 100 Solana, okay? And the price, you want to use the current price. You can use a projected one if you really wanted to, but let's just use a current price, right? And what we're trying to do is we're selling at the risk bands. And if you and the risk bands themselves, if you go over here, the time and risk bands, let me show you. Like this is what I use for dynamic dollar cost averaging. So when you're talking about the time and risk bands, this is the time when things got overheated over here. See this 0 0.9 to 1.0? Very few times in Bitcoin's history, just talking about Bitcoin, because Solana is so new. 
when it was at this point. And it was a great time to actually sell. This time, there's only 80 days. This time, 125 days, and so on and so forth. So for me, what I took a look at, I go, well, I can DCA or I can dynamic DCA, which I done dynamic DCA a lot. Not every one of them, though. And for these two price points and even the third, I'm layering out at these at these uh, risk bands. And then over here, let's say that I let's say that I buy ten dollars of Bitcoin every day, just ten bucks a day, right? So maybe I start right here at ten bucks. When I go to the risk band is zero point five to zero point six, maybe I double that and put in twenty bucks a day. And then over here, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. You see where I'm going with this, right? So, and what I love about this one, I'll come back to this. Let me see here. Historic risk levels. Check this out. Current risk levels. Let me do that one. Ah, this is the one. Price color coded by risk. Let me hide this. Remember that one I just I, I talked about the 0 0.9 to 1.0. Look at this. I'm gonna make these pop up. Look where these came up at. So in 2013, it was a double top. It nailed it. 2017, uh, didn't nail it, nail it. It got to 15,000, 19,000, not bad. And over here, 57,000, not too bad. And then 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, look at this. Maybe this is, remember we talked about you know layering in? Maybe this is the point you wanna layer out. Layer out, layer out. So that would be an example of the time and wristbands. So let's go over here. So let's take Solana, same thing. A little bit newer, but you can see that a time of like 0 0.9 to 1, there's only 33 days that happened. And that was when it was around, actually, let's just see. Yeah. yeah, pretty much the tops. 248s, 189s, not too bad. Of course, they did over here too. April 2021. So again, that's the great thing about layering out, right? So we come over here and I say like this, I've got, a, I've got 100 soul. Here's, the, here's the, the, the current price. If I wanna sell at the risk bands at the beginning of the risk band, the middle, let's just go to the top, right? And the strategy could be constant, linear or exponential. Let's just go constant just to be safe real quick. And you need to see what it says here is like, okay, at the conservative level, I want to be very conservative. If you would, that sounds fine. When it hits 0 0.5, maybe you take $1,100 out. And then when it hits the 0 0.6, you take this out. And this is this, this. And you total out of 28,000. Or maybe you become the more aggressive person. You're like, I don't care. Like, that's kind of like what I'm doing here. Because I'm starting to think about taking out around 0 0.7. So now you take out a 4.2, you take 67, 11,000, 17,000, you get 38. But you see where how things can be layered in and layered out. So it takes the guesswork out. So if this is something that you think would work for you, if you're like, ah, I got it, whatever. Uh, Ben's having a sale right now. Links in the description. You get 10% off the first month and that's it. So let me just think about that as far as like a tool to make things simple. And again, um, I will tell you like this. Dollar cost averaging, once you understand it or just buying crypto and buying the dips and all that stuff, once you do it for a long time, like we've been doing it for a long time, it becomes second nature. And it's like, it's so easy, right? It's so easy once you've done it for years. And once you've seen 40, 50% drop, it's not a big deal. But as time goes on, and I'm telling you right now, my biggest problem was not buying in 2017, in 2018, in 2019, in 2020. In 2021, my problem was selling at the right time. I did a better job than 2017. But again, in 2022, my problem wasn't buying. 2023, my problem isn't buying. In 2024 and 2025, I think my problem again will be the selling aspect. And I'm just being honest, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We're gonna talk about it's time sensitive. Thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate you.